Hello, this is Moraka PDX. Uh, you got Tony and Daniel. We are going to do a stream of Elden Ring from Software Game and uh, take a look at what we got, what I've been missing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So, anything you want to talk about or start off with? Um, no, I just you're, you're bringing up make a fresh character, I assume. Or yeah, yeah. well, we can. I mean, like I said, we go through character. I barely got past the tutorial screen. Yeah, I'd I'd love to get to go through the character creation process and kind of get a feel for what speaks to you. All right, so let's do that. Kind of a fresh start. Probably turn our game audio back on. Yes. All right. Previous quest came. Yeah, understood. Mm. This is good timing because the DLC is going to drop in like 20 days. Oh, it's not out yet? No. I know, I keep thinking it's out, but it's not. So it's really going to depend on what your playstyle is, but ultimately you, know, you can kind of change it throughout the game. And the game is very forgiving. You can re restat your character mm -hmm. many times. So if you you know you do get hooked, but you don't like it, you can you know. So this is just my impression from previous games, but this is kind of a, a soft version of of easy, medium, hard for a start. Sort of. In terms of equipment and build. Well, and also press triangle, you can see the stats for the character, the base stats. Mm. And then there's more character classes, too, if you scroll left or right. So, oh, seriously? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Maybe. most of these are, those are like dex and strength characters. Oh, and all now the archetypes are You got, you are got intelligence and some more dex characters, and then you got your classic... Uh, all right, that's... Okay. Depraved, you know, like... Uh, I forgot you could... Uh, I forget you had access to so many of the starting classes. It's yeah. like almost all of them, if not all of them, right? Yeah, there's quite a few different ways to play this. And starting gear, you know, you can play it where you're a dodge master. This is definitely, like, that's the hard mode. Like, you got no equipment. Yeah, but look at those stats, though. Those right, stats. but that's, like, the most flexible, right? Yeah, but the club has really good uh, stun, you mm -hmm. know? So you can really stun people and... I wouldn't put that down as hard mode necessarily. I mean, you can find gear and clothing pretty quickly. And Prisoner's speaking to me. What do you think about that? Prisoner's cool. It's definitely a parry mode. It's got the tiny mm. shield. It's got the little poker. That's a, uh, you know, so you can block and poke with that and parry. And so it's a crit, kind of a crit master class. Plus, it has this um, spell. It's got a staff to cast spells. Um... You know, this is obviously a strength build class. So I would usually yeah. default with something like the Vagabond. I like the mm -hmm. classic uh, it's very sword well, and shield. Very well-rounded. Um, I, I personally have made a character like that multiple times. Yeah. I think that's probably a good way to go, because if you go with a dex-based one, you're going to be really relying on dodging and parrying, whereas with the Vagabond, you know, you can soak some, tank some damage, and it'll be that's easy mode, in my opinion, for most what most people are used to. You know, kind of classically. Totally. All right. Let's give that a go. Uh, choose body type. Oh, uh, what's the difference on? Is that I literally male, female, or is that? Yeah. Okay. Um, Pretty sure your A is male. Okay. Oh, name. Uh oh. My character's name was a little more unorthodox. My main character for Elden Ring's name is Tater Tot. Recommendation on a keepsake? Well, in Dark Souls 3, you know, there was one that kind of like really made the game easier for a lot of sakes so the crimson amber medallion is it medallion oh yeah increases your maximum hp but it's a really small amount so it's kind of like whatever uh small that's to give you a s small nugget of souls basically golden seed you use those to um level up your estus blast basically oh. uh fame and ashes crack pot 
Don't keep your butcher burners, boiled prawn. I said, gosh, that tracks down the aggression. Um, I mean, they don't have anything like that key. Like, that always seemed like a... Yeah, no, there's... I mean, there's... Oh, there is a key. Yeah. Two stone keys shaped like swords breaks the seal on the imp statues that can be used once. That's not really as big of a deal as, like, Mm -hmm. the previous Mm keys. So, honestly, I would pick the golden seed because that gives you the most long-lasting effect where you can upgrade your Estus flask and, you know, you'd be... It's a good, good permanent thing that you get a lot of use out of. You can do detailed appearance stuff, but you can also do that stuff at any point later in the game. Okay. You are not stuck looking the way you want. You can change your the body type, every detail. You can have purple skin, whatever. No, okay. no, none of that stuff. As soon as you unlock the hub. Well, classic from software intro. Debuting all the bosses. Mm-hmm. I think the Vagabond looks really cool too. It's one of the coolest looking ones. Yeah. So here's a confession. Uh, I have only completed Dark Souls 1. Mm-hmm. 1, 
right? Yes, one. Um, at least once, maybe a couple times, possibly. Mm-hmm. I can't remember if I actually did more than one playthrough. But uh, never... I don't think I played two. Played, played a little bit of three with you, and then a little bit of Bloodborne, which uh, I would love to complete, but have not been able to commit because I'm constantly hoping they'll do a remaster, which will probably never happen or will be years from now. Yeah. All right. That has to do with the multiplayer aspect of the game. You should actually go to the menu. Go to go to your go to multiplayer. It's that left on the bottom. And there's one. So um, you can join. These group passwords are just open groups, and they allow you to see signs from different groups on the ground. And they'll just be messages, hints, and things like that. Um, I can't remember all of them that I have. I know Kindred is one of them that I use, mm-hmm. and it lets, allows me to interact with you know the other players in that group mm-hmm. and whatnot. And then this is if you want to directly lock in to just play with specific people and have a private server. Okay. You can still be invaded and stuff like that, but you can group. Sure, sure. Yeah, whatnot. But anyway, um, go back. I'm surprised that finger wasn't in here. So go to inventory. I don't want to read what that says. I'm going to use to write messages. Oh, okay. So that's how you write messages to the rest mm, of the world. Okay. I, right. I wanted to be more specific about what that I have done. So anyway, that's how you can write messages like, you know, a try finger butthole kind of situation. Sure. Yeah. glimpse of the outside world nice move yeah iconic mm-hmm. I think that death was about not panning with the camera oh nice the erd tree that is uh, such a good shot mm-hmm. it is beautiful and then all the particle effects and... yeah it's definitely it's definitely like a great design I mean that's that's again it's very from soft always making sure you have iconic like world design yeah every moment of the game is pretty aesthetically um, this know. this one in particular since this is elden rings a break from what has been the the dark souls series mm-hmm. and then um what demon souls preceded it mm-hmm. it's technically its own it's and short story and, mm-hmm. yeah. and so um, although, but thematically, they're so close, mm-hmm. you know, whereas like in Elden Ring, they really figured out how to like kind of give it its unique identity. And I think the Erd Tree is like absolutely crucial to making that differentiating factor. It's universe. Yeah. Yeah. But it's amazing how they still have NPCs that cross over. Um, there's nods to the same NPCs in the, throughout, throughout <laughs> the world. <laughs> It's just everybody's like, hey, just jump. <laughs> That's so. If you're a speedrunner, you jump. Really? Yeah. Some uh, is this? I I know there's a boss. Well, like a pseudo boss fight where you're supposed to fail. Like, you know, it's in soft quotes. Uh, mm-hmm. but do you cut straight to that moment it, on your first it, death, regardless? Yeah, it ejects you to the tutorial if you die at this uh, boss or which is exactly how they did it in the other previous you know Dark Souls games oh okay that's sneak yeah. and uh it doesn't reach in for more Ernestus I don't have or whatever they call it in this one yeah got that's a shield good. I'm kind of admittedly a light attack too. heavy I've, attack I've been meaning to jump back in dodge with anticipation of the roll ooh, DLC. ooh I got off a nice fat roll yep and you could strip mm. some gear off to yeah, but I mean, or, I mean, you are tanking with all that gear. Block and parry. You can parry. Lose, lose pants and helmet. Parry. That's still not gonna work for me, but we'll try. I mean, that's the nice thing is you could get a uh, you know spear or. A yeah, I saw that. Like a halberd can... was like uh, one of the. I don't know if I actually start with it. Do I? 
Mm. Uh, inventory. No, it's gonna be under equipment top. That makes sense. Yeah, you do have a halberd actually. Or no, sorry, that's just the other ghosted icon. My bad. No, it's right there, isn't it? Oh no, it is. Oh okay, I'm just blended in. I thought. It was oh just... okay, so it's already equipped. How do I do the? It's um... uh, on the D-pad. You okay. press. Uh, I think it's right for your right hand. Oh look at that! You can cycle through them. Hmm. Yeah. Look now, at that. Press block and attack at the same time. Yeah, um, it doesn't oh, do. It's, it's not, not the... a spear type. It's a, okay. Yeah, it's a more of a hammer. Type right. Before. So I technically put in my guard down. Mm -hmm. Now you might gain some speed if you unequip that and unequip your opposite weapon. You know, might be worth it. I don't know if it's gonna get you. They're fairly forgiving in this game with the. That uh, seems if it no, no, if no, at no. all that's no, no. real. The oh, the two hand. I need to go to two hand with it. No, 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 no. Go to back to the menu. Okay. Because it's still equipped in your inventory, it's still equipped on your person, oh. it's still affecting your equipment load. Oh. So this is your equip load over right, right, here, right, right, right. and see how close the numbers are together. I need to put it into my ethereal pocket of doesn't weigh anything. Yeah, and by doing that, you just need to hover over it and press square, and you'll unequip it. So that did lose you a little bit, but you might still be, it's, see, heavy load, so you're still going to be fat rolling. So, you know, yeah, now you're down to medium. You already start just by taking the pants off. You could either try the gloves and the helmet or pants, whatever. But as long as you're in medium. medium, it should get rid of your fat roll. Yep, yep, you are nimble as hell. I can't two-hand this weapon? You can. So you have to hold um, L R1 and then triangle, I think. It's a different mechanic for... Uh, was it R1? Uh, or is it... Okay, it's a you have to maybe it's L one and triangle. Um, L one triangle. No. R one triangle. Uh, it's a dual two button. That's a really cool attack. That's right there. That's called the weapon art. It's okay, a, that's how I do the weapon art. Okay. Yeah. So that's just R two with just I the weapon. It does use your your. Oh crap! So you. How do I re uh, punish that? Visiting a bonfire or oh, using no. the blue Estus flasks, you know. Oh no, okay. So it's the same thing as like casting a spell. Alright. Fireball is a weapon. I don't know arms. how I. Um, maybe muscle memory. Yeah, go uh, for it. No, sorry. Uh, is it a double tap? No. Why am I blanking on this? It's not the end of the world. I can. Uh... Oh, no. Yeah, no, no. This is... I won't be doing that anymore. <laughs> Oh my god, why? Nope. There we go. Oh, what'd you do? I think I just pressed it at the same time. Nope. Oh, hold triangle first and then press R1. And you can do the same thing with your shield. Hold triangle and then press L1. You can hold your shield with two hands. Which, I mean, why would you? But... I mean, Depending on what weapons you're holding, it might make more sense. You might have a sword in each hand, and then I could think of real life scenarios where you'd be like wanting to protect yourself that, like, brace yourself that much. Or but... imagine you're the Witcher and you got one sword for killing monsters and one sword for killing humans. But if you're in a fight and you need to like full brace like that with your shield, like you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, truly. Um. Okay, I'm going the opposite direction. I need to go. Um. I don't remember how to run. I think you hold circle. Hold the dodge button. Circle. Circle. Oh, wow. You're right. Okay. Does this eat my stamina? Yes. Probably. Or actually, it's... No, it I think it, it's it good. eventually it's did. Good. Yeah. Oh, it's only in a fight. That's right. I remember yeah. that now. Okay, here's this dude. Oh, Don't forget auto uh, locking on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then press dodging with circle is... Quick tap circle when you when you get to forward backwards you know you can dodge in every oh, direction. <coughs> nope. Oh, missed. Oh, you got a hit in. You got a couple of hits in. Ooh, nice dodge. Oh, oh, couldn't go. dodge that last one. It's all good. You got some good hits in there. Yeah, I did. The first boss. This can be. Really intimidating. The 
think that's why most people literally do just run off the cliff. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm good. Maybe new game plus, you know, they might go back and crush that game. That's like two handed with the halberd and it did very little damage. There's like honestly, it didn't do that bad. It could have been worse. I get a lot of the other starting weapons. It's just yeah, I'd have to be so good on the dodge timing though to be able to like whittle that away. I mean, Lobo's a junior level. Well, and you know, it's been understandably a really long time since your last Souls game. It's been so hard to get back into that mode. That's why I haven't completed the other games. Yeah, I know. I know. I have to be in the right mindset and mood to want to commit to it. So that Kina game, honestly, it's, I mean, it's not as like tight as this, but there's the parry with the shield. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh! Yeah. Had some, had some rough boss fights. <laughs> <laughs> it's bay. So Digital Extremes is uh, progress with uh, Soul Frame. Hmm. It's continuing to click along. It's looking so good. Nice. Thank you. Oh, I can't wait to get my hands on that one. Wake up, sleepyhead. I really like the their idea of having more of like a sort of like never ending story meets studio ghibli princess mononoke kind of vibes so do you want to take the more tutorial path to get more acclimated or do you want to dive right into the world i can just dive into the world like not yeah. you don't want to fight the little the little dummies no okay you feel pretty acclimated with the the buttons and all that no but no i'm, I'm good it's, it's, <laughs> well let's you, go if you fall down in that hole that's a tutorial if you take the doorway that's lit to your left then that's going uh, into world. okay yeah that's one thing i do remember it's like uh, stamina only applies when in combat mm -hmm. you can always come back here but if you just yeah you're ready mm, expect a Giant, jump scare. giant boulder or a skeleton <laughs> like hit me in the back mm -hmm. just like instantly for your first bonfire welcome to a souls like <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i got um, a fog wall press l1 to pull up your hood real quick l1 l1 oh it's not it's not pulling up your hood you might as well rest real quick i think your uh, skill um bar is empty so That'll replenish your skill. Oh yeah, so you have that golden tier. You might as well use that to reinforce your flask. What do I do? It's do a those things? so you notice how there's a gold dot next to flasks. Yeah. They did an update that let you know that you have the ability to upgrade your flasks, That's which nice. was really a quality of life update sure. that they did later, which I was really put so grateful with. So add charge. Yeah. Yes. So that was your starting item that you just used, and then increase the amount of replenishes by flask. You'll get, you'll find those later as well. Okay. So you can increase the potency and how many, and that's interesting. You can allocate them just like in Dark Souls: how many blue ones you have, how many red ones you have, so to speak. So, um, it's probably going to say you don't have any more. Yeah, there you go. So allocate flasks right now. So right now you have four to one, four red, one blue. Oh. Which is probably good, but if you're going to not use your skill very much, you can turn that blue one into a red one and have more red ones. Which, when I do strength builds and dex builds and stuff, unless I really like my weapon art, if I get a mm -hmm. weapon art that I really, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be using this constantly, mm -hmm. then I'll probably go 50 50 or, or 70 30. 4 to 1 is probably smart for now. Yeah, yeah, it's a good good way to start. Cause okay. Depending on, you might decide I don't even really use my weapon art until you find a cool one. And do I just close? Or? Cancel and back out of there. And then the rest of the menu, you can pass time if you want to play at nighttime or daytime, really. That's the main thing for that. Yeah, until you actually get some items. So it's two golems humping each other there on the right. Turn your thing. Yeah, those, the golems right there. The gargoyles humping each other. That One of that starting items was that stone sword key. And you would be able to open that and then go by on that fog gate. And, and these fog gates and these dungeons are like the Indiana Jones 
things, you know, tunnels where you have death puzzles, basically. You have to platform and, you know, run from boulders, run from swinging blades, this and that. And at the end, there's usually some kind of loot. So those fog gates are usually hiding loot of different kinds. So um, They're pretty hard. I don't know if I'd jump right into one, you know, but like once you've sunk your, a few hours of gameplay in there, it's good to go back and get the loot because it's a, some of them some of the loot's really helpful. Mm. The first one's obviously... That, that first one's actually, I feel like, harder than some of the other ones. So it was one that I came back and cleared pretty late in the game for me, me personally. Mm, okay. You looking for that fog wall? <laughs> I'm just looking for an illusion wall. Mm-hmm. That's what I mean, illusion, illusionary. Okay. <laughs> All right. Time to go. Wouldn't be a Souls game without a whole bunch of elevators. And this game has no shortage of elevators. Hmm. What a boss. So this is your first encounter with the masked, well, first encounter with the world, the oh, actual yeah. world. And then you gotta go down and talk to this guy. You're gonna run into him a few times throughout the game. He's pretty, pretty important dude. Do get around. Yeah. Grace is, so that, that message is basically like, if you wanna stick to the story of the game, if you follow those arcs of light, they'll take you to where you need to go to complete the story. Got it. So there's a lot to unpack with that first dialogue. Without the maiden, you can't really interact with the Erd tree. Mm -hmm. And so that's why there's this huge prominence of that. Like he's not just making fun of you for being maidenless. Like, and then without ruins, you wouldn't be able to progress. You know, get stronger and things like that. And then, what was the other thing you mentioned? Damn it, I'm forgetting what the third thing was there. I don't know. Maiden, maiden's crucial. Runes are crucial because it's your currency. You literally do everything with the runes. Damn it. I don't know. So, um, pro tip, avoid that guy. Mm -hmm. He will just decimate you. So, yeah, I usually... And uh, with R3, you can crouch and sneak. And the sneaking mechanics in this game are actually pretty exceptional. So, if you do get kind of close to him... The bushes fully work at concealing you. Tall grass, whatnot. Mm -hmm. I can jump, oh my god. Mm -hmm. Jumping is OP. And then is this the one that's full of all the assholes? This, this right here? No, this is friendly. Oh, okay. As you meet your first merchant friend. First piece to upgrade things. I never actually use that anvil. You can use the uh, hub to do all of your upgrades with the blacksmith. It's just like Santa Claus. I eventually buy everything that he has just so I can have it. But, you know, those recipes are important and uh, 
whatnot. The consumable items are kind of meh, but you know, depending on your starting class, like if I was the depraved uh, one, you totally buy that armor early on. But also, I mean, it's drop armor. So. Recommendation. Wow. Yeah, he, he's going to tell you what's a good thing to buy from him. Mm -hmm. So now touching it obviously makes it so you can quick travel back to it, and uh, if you die, you respawn there. So, uh, yep, exactly. I don't remember. No, no prompt. But if you're in direct proximity, you can line up a. It's actually, I think, just a quick tap. If you want to do the, like, oops, R1, well, quick tap. That worked too. It yeah, definitely worked. Yeah, there's a handful of guys to practice on over here. Did it? Too. Might be getting my game controls mixed up. Yeah, definitely a, a little rusty. Oh yeah, now you can do the R1 backstab when it made the uh, that sound. It was they were stunned, and then you could come up, tap R1, and get the the special stun lock or mm. stun, stun move. Oh, shit. It's the same thing as when you do a parry. It makes that same noise. There you go. Got another unsuspecting one over there. Might want to heal. 
on top. Square. Give me that hold R2 and then be ready to hit it with the R1. Oh, almost. Maybe, maybe you were a little off kilter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So should I go for the camp or this cave or? Uh, this cave is kind of a, yeah, yeah, I'd go to the camp. And when you go to the camp, there is a, if you aggro them, um, there's a guy that has a horn and he's going to aggro the entire camp and they're going to come rushing in. So you either have to pick off a few and then get them or you have to rush in and kill the guy in the middle. Uh, and then you can basically take the other people you know, but, you know, and if people are in proximity and they notice you, they might come, but if that guy with the horn blows his horn, then you're going to have, like, 20 guys coming at you all at the same time. Yeah, and I would say that's pretty much where I stopped, because mm -hmm. I was, like, unable to, um... Yeah, progress like that? Yeah, I think, uh, I would, like, maybe clear the camp, like, well, there's after also... a lot of hard work, and then like get killed and then they'd so, all be back and I'd be like oh okay well there's another side of grace that's closer to the camp and I suggest you get that especially regardless of whether you attack them or not mm -hmm. there's a statue of Mar Marika right here which also lets you spawn closer to the camp but mm -hmm. the side of grace is just helpful in general and it's slightly to the south or to your right down by, the, by that brick wall uh, way yonder the far bricks yeah, so you're going that right. Yep, that's it. You're heading directly towards it. That's the side of grace. So I get that. And then there's another one with that road that shoots up to the left. So you might as well have both of these sets of grace. They're really kind of close to each other. This is actually a really popular PvP spot right here. Hmm. So, yeah, now that you have this, if you die, it's mm -hmm. not that bad. So if you feel brave, but otherwise, if you want to progress with the story, you just need to go through that gate on the other side. And I probably was missing that spawn point. Yeah, when when you die and you have to come all the way back from the first side of grace, it's really frustrating. So, yeah, I mean, there's kind of a multitude of different ways you can kind of pick them off. And, but if you do start to make your way towards the center, I'd go straight for this guy, you know, point him out if you see him but he does have a horn hanging on his belt that's you know two three feet long so he's kind of easy to pick up if you know what you're, what you're looking for but you got to be quick oh, i forgot there's the dogs too yeah if he sees you coming he will just first thing he does is pull his horn out and go to blow on it and even if he even gets the softest note out of it the, the, everybody starts coming nice you can definitely pick this guy up though I don't think it'll aggro anybody. Almost. So that, that guy right there, that's the guy. Mm. He's the one that if he, if he sees you coming, he's just going to go for the horn. And he paces back and forth up the road in the middle. That's the other side of grace up there on the left. Mm hmm. Oh, shit. probably pretty low hanging fruit as long as the guy pacing back and forth isn't on that side of his walk don't mind if I do I also could just uh, not worry about it true because they're just gonna come back there is a weapon inside that thing behind that guy 
Oh, yeah? Yeah. So something I should bother grabbing? I mean, you know, if you want more weapon variety, yeah, it's something different than what you already have. I don't remember if it's... There's two of these things in this camp, so there's actually two weapons you can get. One's a two-handed sword, and the other one, I think, is a flail of some kind. So, we got some options. Yeah, maybe wait until Horn... Horn guy. Hornibus? Yeah, fucks off. <laughs> That's that damn horn on his hip right there. And uh, my first playthroughs, I totally was like, uh, I'm just going to pick them off. And then eventually I fucked up and they were too close and got, you know, they were coming from every direction. You just gotta jump up there and there's another one of these on the south side of the camp. Or I guess it'd be east side of the camp. Lord Sworn's great sword. Dang. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, if you're enjoying the two handed action, the great swords you know. There's plenty of great swords in this game in general and this is your first taste of one. At least, at least found one. I'm sure some of the classes, I think there might be a two-handed sword. Definitely not the biggest one. I think it's like the equivalent of the bastard sword in the other games, the previous games. There we go. But it gives you the same mechanics and uh, whatnot. Mm. Okay. Are you heavy rolling right now? Curious. Yeah. What'd that happen? Oh, because uh, I left my... Uh... Yep, your halberd. Oh, halberd on. Yep, back down to medium. So, there is a big guy. Yeah, you might be able to rush that guy and get the drop on him right now. You might draw some attention, but if but just make sure you kill the horn guy first before you can toot a, toot a note. Oh, nice one hit. It's your local regional map that you just found and gave you some visibility on the area because everything had the fog over the map until just now because you found that. Get rickety wrecked. <laughs> yeah, I think this sword's already working out for you. It's doing some pretty solid damage. Oh, shit. Okay. That guy, you might want to save for last, or pretty close to last, because, yeah, he's got some pretty strong oh, tactics oh. with shield. Yeah, there's quite a few guys over here. Nice. Oh, you a got dog two. Got, you know what? Fuck this. Two doggos. Uh-oh. Shield guy saw you. Tower shield guy. He's a... You can come party if you want. Oh, yeah, he's oh aggro. shit. Okay. Well, you got two aggro, I and mean, you got one small guy and one big guy. He's being a little more cautious. Ooh, nice dodge. You dodged... Through it. Ooh. Oh, oh. Ooh. You got two heals left, so just keep that in mind. I don't know whether you want to save him or not. He's rushing you. Nice dodge. Let's save some of that stamina. Ooh, there you go. Build up some stamina. Oh, no. shit. Retreat. There you go. Nice dodge. There you Get go. Get Rex on. <laughs> Look at this guy so politely waiting for me. Yeah, he's a little scared. He's like, guys, help. Oh, yeah. His vision wasn't very far. Gotta get one of these uh, successful backstabs. Or just, you know. <laughs> One hit is pretty solid too. So all those golden flowers that you see, once you get the recipe from that merchant, you can turn those into the item that gives you the ability to summon friendlies and become, it's kind of like the, uh, oh gosh, what was it called in Dark Souls? 
I'm forgetting what they're called, but the stones or whatever that let you summon people, basically. I'm blanking on it. Should just go ahead and rest in this one, right? Well, if you rest, it's going to repopulate everybody at the camp. Right. So but if I mean, you're done at the camp, yes. If you're not done at the camp, no. I was going to move forward, so might as well, right? Um, well, w why don't you go down there and get that other item, the other weapon? So, mm -hmm. uh, on the other, so like that giant thing there on your left, there's another one further down on the left. Oh, okay. You can at least get that other weapon. I see. There's only two weaker guys guarding it. I think you still have a potion too. You must have a flask. Yeah, I think I have at least one. Oh. Right. There's no no doggos, just those two guys. Probably better off getting the one on the right first. There you go. Not to me. Yeah, there, there it is. That was really good damage. And here's your item. So, before you fully progress, mm -hmm. I recommend you go back to the first camp. You can fast travel there, or you can run there, but I'd, I'd probably just fast travel. So pull up your map. Oh. Oh, wait, actually, no, I, I think you can do it with the map. Mm, I would get to the map. I think it's the uh, touch pad. Uh -huh. And scroll down. Yep, to that one. Nope, just that one. Yeah, select it. And if it's not nighttime, it's nighttime. Move forward a little bit. Uh, okay, now go to back to the uh, side side of Grace mm -hmm. slash bonfire. Uh, sit and let some time pass. Oh, there you go. Waiting. Treasure. And the end of the path. I am Nemo. I just absolutely refuse it to trap. <laughs> <laughs> Don't download any Disney property with Torrent. <laughs> or Metallica music. Yeah. Um, so that's basically that dialogue. I would consider passing time. I want to see if it'll work. Until nightfall. And 
and pan to the right. Darn. Okay. So let's back out. <laughs> Cut some epic quads. And, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> hamstring. Uh, back out. Uh, pull up your menu. Menu. Okay, so you, this is exactly uh, that menu is what I was going to say. So on the right hand side, mm -hmm. um, go to select over to that side of the menu with your D pad. Uh, go up. So I like to put the horse on the left D pad. And so, yeah, exactly that slot. And now that's the ring on the right. So that way, every time you press left on the D pad, you're going to whistle for your horse. I mean, you can put it on any D-pad spot you want, but that's my preference. And it works pretty good. So you can summon your horse. Uh, oh, sorry. Hold triangle. That gives you that quick menu. And so I would go ahead, run basically back to that. I would, you know, ignore those guys. Oh, yeah, you might get used to the horse. That's right. So uh, if you press R1, you'll attack on the right-hand side. If you press L1, if I think I remember correctly, you'll attack on the left-hand side of, of the horse. So you can attack on either side if you approach enemies on either side, which is kind of nice uh, fighting mechanics. Torrent also has double jump, which really helps you get to places that you wouldn't think that you could. And out of all the, fall, the Souls games, Elden Ring has the biggest gravity forgiveness for like falling longer distances. Mm. You you don't you're not immune to falling distances, mm -hmm. but it is pretty generous. So just keep that in mind while you're traversing things. Now let's go back to that enemy camp that you were at previously and head to the right, which would be east. Yeah, you're heading basically exactly where. It's another NPC dialogue that I think is kind of important. A little more to the left. Maybe a bit more to the left. Oops, careful. Stay to the left. Stay to the left. Don't go go down there. You will die. <laughs> yeah, and then maybe back to the right. Yeah. This cliff is fine, but there's a bigger cliff to that. Yeah, go that way. A little more to the right. Yeah. Go ahead this way for a little bit. To the left. Yep, straight. Straight? Yep. Right there. Go ahead and dismount. Walk up to that brown tree. Give it a whack. More dialogue. What a shame. No one knew me all this time. I could never be my own. And so this is all I have to express to my friends. I hope you can forgive me. I think that if you can afford to wait for a while, I could sneak back into the cave and bring back something of actual value. So that is exhausted his dialogue, I believe, for now. Let's go check on him at the cave. So to do that, we need to basically go back to the first bonfire again. Either fast travel or traverse with the horse over there. It probably takes equally as long either way. But you can pick up items from the horse, which is freaking cool. I didn't realize I was dismounting to pick up things for a really long time. Mm -hmm. Like what? 
This is the best quality of life feature to be able to pick up things while you ride over it. <laughs> so yeah, at nighttime there's some different uh, life that populates the map in the daytime. Damn, that was a solid hit. <laughs> So we want to go. You you could you could do this if you want to. It's uh, not exactly the cave he was talking about. But, oh. but uh, you're pretty well equipped, and I think and acclimated that you probably can knock this out. It's a short cave. So yeah, that that lets you summon NPC or uh, not NPCs, real people. So this is where a torch does help. I don't know if you can see very well, but I don't know if you've actually come across a torch just yet. Yeah, I guess, it, yeah, is you stick to the fire before. Yeah. Nice. Keep your guard up, you might have aggroed the other dog. Pull them in here. Nice. Nice. This is going really nicely. So a lot of people get overran really quick. Oh, there. Shit. Oh no. Fuck. That's okay. All right. Um, Healed on the wall. You 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 moving really well. Most of the time, I got caught off guard almost instantly and died. So, like, that was not bad at all. Mm -hmm. And plus, you're going to respawn at the entrance of the cave. Okay. It's not, not like you got a lot of backtracking to do. And it's not like your health bar shrinks like in Dark Souls 2. Right. That was so brutal. <laughs> Souls back. Go, no, no, back, 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 back. Get your souls. In case you die again. There you go. Because if you die twice, you, they're gone for good. Without picking them up. Get wrecked. <laughs> and got some trickling in, yeah. Getting quick with that auto uh, target. Target assist. Just massively helpful. Nice. Totally interrupted him. That was perfect. Now, the items they drop are pretty inconsequential. They're just more beast bones and stuff like that. But you know, when combat dies down, I'll grab them. But I have a bad habit of trying to pick things up mid combat and get myself killed. Mm really dumb habit. Ooh, Ooh, shit. You can block with the your weapon too. Of course it doesn't soak as much damage. Mm -hmm. But it might take some. But obviously dodging, if you get a clean dodge, it's going to be more effective. Sorry, I hadn't realized I hadn't cleared the cave. Yeah. And I think it's still not clear. Yeah. Probably. Might be the last one. Mm. Might have to use those quick attacks. <laughs> those do. You might have to read the item description when you get a chance. Crackpot? Isn't that just a distraction? 
You can throw? I don't remember. Oh, or I think maybe you can fill them. I don't know. It's been too long. I'm too rusty. I should have played up some. I need to start playing in anticipation of the DLC. Shadow of the Erd Tree. Hmm. Almost a little less than three weeks from now. chunks there. Ooh, hell yeah. <laughs> Stunned him. Oh, okay. Yeah, I dodged into that one. So down, yep, that single slot uh, down below. You got one talisman slot at the moment, so you'll have to cycle between them. Boost fire damage protection without any like negatives, which mm. is pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. That's handy. So some of the talisman are like, you know, will give you better protection, but you, or make you do more damage, but you'll have less defense against that element or whatever. So the last trouble out. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the end of the cave. I mean, it's always good to look, make sure there isn't a chest. That's where I came in from? Okay. Yeah. I see. Some of the caves like this do have chests, but I think this one doesn't. They usually put the chests, like, very obviously. Uh, I don't I can't remember if there is one or not. I don't think there is. Not this one. I think the talisman that you unlocked was the, the main thing. I do eventually when you find a torch oh I think you can buy a torch from that merchant I would definitely buy it for when you start hollowing out caves like this and I keep it equipped in my shield hand on my left hand mm -hmm. so I can have a weapon and a light source at the same time typically because uh, you can't I don't think you can hang a lamp off of your belt like you can in um, Bloodborne maybe you can but also the lamps never produce as much light as the torches. The torches produce a really good amount of light. Hmm. So it kind of sucks because you have to lose your shield or your offhanded weapon. This game, two weapon wielding is the most advanced out of all of them. So if you do get interested in wielding two swords, two axes, two this or that, if they're two of the same classes, you do get really good um, powerful weapon arts. They do chain together better and stuff like that compared to any of the other previous games. So, you know, something to consider. Even two great swords are really strong combos. No joke. Wow. Two great swords, two, two giant spears. Uh, one of my characters, my favorite weapons was two lances. Two great lances, like jousting style, like huge lances. You do a jump attack downward and I, I could not, I would just crush people. PvP, people were getting mad. I was like early adopter of that. Nice. So, yeah. All right. Um, I think we'll take a break um, and then decide if we'll do more or whatever we are going to do. I know that we're going to sample some Smoke Barrel Whiskey, Hell limited yeah. edition. We're definitely going to check back in with NPC Bach, the little castaway dude. Right. That was a, turned into a bush, and we're going to check on him and see what kind of gift he has for you and as well as progress through the story at some point <laughs> all right